Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my six defenses to stream for week number four of the 2023 fantasy football season, as well as giving you guys some honorable mentions at the end of the video. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you want access to my weekly rankings, as well as an answer to any of the questions you guys may have guaranteed answers on patreon link in the video description for seven dollars and fifty cents a month so without further ado let's get into my week number four defenses to stream for the 2023 fantasy football season we begin with my first defense to stream for week number four, the Denver Broncos at the Chicago Bears. The Denver Broncos defense is currently owned in 6.9% of leagues on ESPN. Very nice, I like, and 9% owned on NFL. Now, the Denver Broncos defense just got bukkake'd on. They just got a train ran on them by the Miami Dolphins. Tua Tunga Vailoa in the first half, and then... He tagged in Mike White. Mike White has a great second half. So Tua, Tyreek, Raheem Mostert, Devin, two chains, Devin A chain, Mike White, Robbie Anderson, Chosen Anderson, all look phenomenal. The Broncos defense just got Cleveland steamered, right? They didn't just allow 50 points. They didn't just allow 60 points. The Denver Broncos defense allowed 70 points in that game. And 70 points, it could have been higher. If they left Tua in, which I'm glad they didn't, right, with Tua's injury history, they could have scored 100. They could have even scored 73 if they kicked a field goal at the end of the game instead of taking a knee. This was a good, old-fashioned ass-whooping. A can of whoop-ass was laid down by the Miami Dolphins. And the Denver Broncos defense appears to be as fraudulent as it gets. I know there was a lot of questions coming into the season about Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson. How is Sean Payton going to figure things out in Denver with the offense looking so inept, so limp dick last season? But everyone was given the gawk gawk 9,000 to the Broncos defense, me included. I thought Patrick Sertain, PS2, and this Denver defense would wake up, but they were sleeping. They got smashed in this game by the Dolphins' offense. So I know what you might be thinking. Nick, you are talking about how bad the Denver Broncos' defense is. How can you reasonably start them in week number four? How can you say they're the number one defense to stream? Well, it's simple. They are playing up against an offense that couldn't score up against the Canadian Football League team's defense. The Chicago Bears' offense sucks ass. They made the Chiefs defense in week three. Now, the Chiefs defense might be a little underrated. But that Chiefs defense looked like the 85 Bears. Three sacks, one interception, one fumble recovery, and 10 points allowed. This game was so bad for the Chicago Bears offense that it felt like for this whole second half of the game, the announcers were talking about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's mom, Donna Kelsey, the whole fucking second half, because it was such a disaster. The Chiefs were winning by so much, they put their backup quarterback in, very similar to what the Dolphins did, laying down the pipe to the Bears, put their backup quarterback in. There might be a backup quarterback sighting again in this game, you know? They might pull Russell Wilson because the Bears' offense is so bad that they might be up by 24 at halftime, and the Broncos' offense doesn't even look good. Neither does their defense. So again, while the Broncos' defense doesn't look great through the first three games of the season, it doesn't matter when you're playing up against the Chicago Bears. Moving to the second defense to stream here, the Cleveland Browns going up against the Baltimore Ravens at home in Cleveland. Browns defense currently owned in 78% of leagues on ESPN, but they're only owned in 20.2% of leagues on NFL. Which is exactly why I bring up the ownership percentage of two different sites, because in some situations, right, it's pretty close. We talked about the Broncos, 6.9% owned on ESPN, 9% owned on NFL, right? Not much of a difference. But comparing ESPN to NFL and the Cleveland Browns, it's night and day. 78% on ESPN, 20.2% owned on NFL. So the Browns defense 
is actually pretty good. Going up against the Tennessee Titans, I know the Titans don't have the best offense in the NFL. At home in Cleveland, five sacks and three points allowed. So this Cleveland defense appears to be the real deal. I'm not here trying to give them the Gawk Gawk 9,000 saying they're top five defense in the NFL, but up against a Ravens offense that is severely injured. Seems like every single year we talk about this is the year the Ravens are going to stay healthy. This is the year where offensively, defensively, they're going to stay healthy. Everything's going to be all good. And obviously, that's what I hope for going into the season because I think Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens offense are incredibly fun to watch. But then every single year, like clockwork, we get like halfway into the season. We're not even halfway into the season. It's week four. And the Ravens just suffer a million injuries. That's already happened again. And it is only week four. Their starting running back in week four might be Kenyon fucking Drake. Okay? Drake, that's how bad things have gone for the Baltimore Ravens. And I don't know if we should blame John Harbaugh. I don't know who to blame, but the Ravens just lost to Gardner fucking Minshew. Now, I think everyone in America thought that Justin Tucker hit a laser on that deep field goal to win the game. I bet on the Ravens money line, I had the Ravens, Dolphins, Seahawks parlay, right? Seemed like easy pickings was going to be an easy win, but no. The Ravens mess it up. So I'm not saying that the Ravens are on fraud alert, that the Ravens are magically going to go from undefeated to just some team that's dead down in the dumps. Well, let's be honest. This is an AFC North matchup, a division rivalry game. I think this one has the makings of a low-scoring, scrappy affair. And with how good the Browns' defense looks, and with how well the Colts' defense, that's worse than the Browns' defense, performed against the Ravens last week, it shouldn't really be all that shocking if the Browns' defense ends up being top five or top three on the week for fantasy. Colts' defense in Baltimore, week three, four sacks, two from recovery, 17 points allowed. Lamar Jackson has been fumbling the ball a lot. Week one against the Texans, Lamar didn't look that good. Week two, sure, the Ravens bounce back up against a garbage Cincinnati Bengals team. And then week three, the Ravens offense kind of sputters out of control again. So again, I'm not trying to dig a hole, or dig a fucking grave and throw the Ravens into it because I don't think the Ravens are dead yet. I think anyone who says that is probably just a Baltimore Ravens hater. But it is very clear right now that the Browns' defense looks good. The Ravens' offense is kind of so-so. So I'm fine in a division rivalry game. Again, a scrappy, lower-scoring game, I feel like. Going with the Cleveland Browns' defense this week in week number four. Moving to defense number three. Again, we have six defenses in today's video because I felt a little spicy. And then we're going to be talking about some honorable mentions at the end. So if you haven't enjoyed this far, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button down below. At number three, we got the New Orleans Saints versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Another one where the ownership percentage is drastically different from website to website. 85% owned on ESPN. 85.4%. NFL, 26.1%. The Saints defense at Green Bay in week number three. Now the Saints end up choking that game. Derek Carr goes down. They have to bring in my boy, famous Jameis Ida W. Winston, and they lose that one. One sack, one INC, 18 points allowed, though, for that Saints defense. They made Jordan Love not look as good as he looked in the first two weeks. Now, again, I talked about Jordan Love in this Packers matchup Entering into last week, how I did worry about Jordan Love because this Saints defense looked too legit to quit. And that was true yet again in week three. Sadly, though, Derek Carr goes down and the Saints crumble. But again, I understand that the Saints offense might be worse with Jameis Winston under center. This is a Jameis Winston revenge game, Saints versus Bucks. I'm very excited about that. But again, this defense is going to look good up against the Bucks. I get it. The Bucs are incredibly hot right now. Now, we have yet to see what happens tonight against the Eagles because I'm not from the fucking future. So we got to go back, hop in the time machine, Marty McFly, to week number two to see how their opponent's defense performed. The Bears' defense going up against the Bucs in week two, 21 points allowed. Not good, right? But again, we just got done a couple of minutes ago shitting all over the Bears. The Bears offense 
bad. Their defense, even worse. Their defensive coordinator quits for unbeknownst reasons right now. We don't know. It seems bad, though, right? The Bears just had $100,000 worth of equipment stolen from their stadium just a few days ago. The Bears are a dumpster fire. So again, while Bakers look good against a garbage Vikings defense and against a garbage Bears defense, maybe he even looks good tonight against the Eagles. It wouldn't be surprising. Bakers running incredibly hot. But up against the Saints, this feels like where... The Bucs offense runs into a wall. Now, I'm not saying the Bucs are guaranteed to lose this game because it's Jameis fucking Winston under center after all, right? Jameis Winston could throw 72 interceptions in this game, and that wouldn't even be crazy, right? Obviously, 72 is crazy, but if he threw four interceptions, would you be surprised? No. So, going up against that Bucks offense, I just feel like this is a Good game for the Saints defense. Again, the Saints defense is good. And this is kind of a comeback to reality game for the Bucs. Even if they lose to the Eagles, no one expects them to beat the Eagles, right? So if they lose, they could just brush that one off, right? Brush it off. But an in-division matchup up against the Saints, I think that Saints defense is going to overpower that Buccaneers offense. Moving now to defense to stream number four, the Cincinnati Bengals at the Atlanta Dons, the Tennessee Titans, 18.5% owned on ESPN for the Bengals. Bengals defense, 48.1% owned on NFL. We got another team here that plays on Monday Night Football. The Bengals play the second game on Monday Night Football. Will Joe Burrow be available? Will he not be available? We shall see. But we obviously have to go back to week number two to look at their defensive performance. Bengals defense against the Ravens, 27 points allowed. Bengals defense has been just about all right this season. They didn't look great against the Ravens, but it is what it is. I'm not trying to shit on the Bengals defense here because again whether you think the Bengals defense is mid or you think they're below mid they're kind of just not the best doesn't really matter because they're going up against the Tennessee Titans now again could this Titans offense pull a rabbit out of a hat right have a good game yeah they have Tannehill they have D-Hop they have Burks they have Derrick Henry right they got Chig They've got some decent playmakers on offense. So, again, I'm not here to say that the Titans offense is incompetent because they are not. But at the end of the day, we just saw the Browns defense against the Titans. Five sacks, three points allowed. Do we really expect this Titans offense in any given game to drop 27 plus points like the Ravens? Again, we did kind of just, in a way, talk down on the Ravens when we talked about the Browns, uh, the Browns defense, right? We talked about how I like the Browns defense because, again, it's a scrappy matchup. Ravens are banged up, this, that, and the other thing. The Ravens weren't as banged up in week two as in week three as in week four this week. Still, the Bengals defense is just all right. And again, you don't need a world-beating defense to succeed up against Tannehill, who might just be destined to throw some fucking numbskull pick in this game, right? The offensive line, not the best in Tennessee, might get plowed by the Bengals defense. Even if the Bengals get spit roasted, even if the Bengals get dookied on today by the Rams, it won't matter. Obviously, it'll suck because the Bengals could potentially start 0-3. And again, Joe Burrow might not play in this game and he might not play up against the Titans, right? And that sucks for the Bengals, right? A team with Super Bowl aspirations potentially starting the year 0-3. But even with Jake Browning or whoever they want to roll out at quarterback against the Titans, they're going to be just fine. So I think the Cincinnati Bengals, even if they lose tonight, even if they're 0-3, they're going to beat the Titans and that defense is going to play well in that game. The next defense to talk about here is the Seattle Seahawks at the New York Football Giants. 13.2% owned on ESPN, 10.4% owned on NFL. But before we can break down the Seahawks and then the sixth defense plus the honorable mentions, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play NFL Pick'em in the whole entire universe, and Underdog has a great offer for you guys tonight on Monday Night Football. All you have to do is take Matthew Stafford higher than half a total yard, which is 
virtually guaranteed to happen. All it needs to do is get one yard in this game and match it with any other pick on Monday Night Football. For instance, you can go with Jalen Hurts higher than 238 and a half passing yards up against the Buccaneers defense in Tampa Bay. Then you can put in whatever entry amount you want. The max on this is $10. You get this correct. You get Stafford over half a total yard. Jalen Hurts over 238 and a half passing yards. You will get three times your entry fee if you want to add more pieces to this pick em card. If you have three pieces, it's six times. If you have four picks, it's 10 times and five picks, 20 times your entry fee. And Underdog has the even greater offer for you right now. You can deposit $500 right now in Underdog Fantasy and Underdog will double your deposit. So you deposit 500, they give you an additional 500. Now I know not everyone wants to deposit 500. So if you deposit just $100, they give you an additional 100, 50 an additional 50, 25 an additional 25. The minimum deposit on Underdog is $10. If you are new and in any of the states listed on your screen right now, please use promo code Notorious or the link in that video description for the first match deposit bonus up to $500. And if you have a gambling problem, please make sure that you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back on into things, the Seattle Seahawks versus the Giants. We get the Giants in prime time again, Sunday night football, three prime time games in four weeks for a team that reeks to high heaven 13.2% owned for the Seahawks defense, 10.4% owned on NFL. A lot of people entering into the season were pretty high on the Seahawks defense. Sure, they may have some injuries and all, but they don't really look that great. Three sacks last week against the Panthers, 27 points allowed. Again, not a fantastic performance. But again, another one of those defenses where they might not be amazing, right? They might not have lived up to my expectations as well as the expectations, I would assume, of many football fans who thought the Seahawks defense would be pretty solid. They're still not terrible. And the Giants offense might be terrible. Now I know, Nick, they bounce back against the Cardinals. And you know, I was getting happy about that. But if they play up against the defense, I get it. The Cowboys defense is great. The 49ers defense is great. The Seahawks defense is better than the Cardinals defense. The Cardinals might have the worst defense in the NFL. And they just beat the Dallas fucking Cowboys. Just beat the Cowboys. So, this Seahawks Defense doesn't need to be world beaters to play decent against the Giants. We know Daniel Jones is going to get sacked. We know Daniel Jones is probably going to throw some stupid interception. So Seahawks defense can be fine. This isn't going to be a high scoring game. And if it is, it's because Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks offense goes balls deep into the Giants. It's sad at this point. It's hard to watch. Every week on primetime, they just roll the Giants out there to get destroyed sad the 49ers defense against the Giants two sacks one INT 12 points allowed I think the Giants are going to get more than 12 points they might get 20 points in this game against the Seahawks but again the Seahawks are going to hit Danny they're going to make him throw some stupid interception so again while I'm not trying to give the gawk gawk 9,000 to the Seahawks defense the Giants offense hasn't proved anything outside of a crazy comeback against the garbage Cardinals defense. Moving now to the final defense to stream before going into the honorable mentions. Houston Texans versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. 2.3% owned on ESPN, 1% owned on NFL. Now this is a shot in the dark, a Stephen Curry shot from fucking not just full court, three courts away, the Texans. Now the Texans defense, pretty underrated. Last week against the Jaguars in Jacksonville, they put the Jaguars in a box. One interception, one fumble recovery, 17 points allowed. Trevor Lawrence was looking like fucking Zach Wilson out there. Down game for that whole Jaguars offense after a not-so-hot performance in Week 2. So two bad games again for the Jags. The Jags, one of those teams that might also be on fraudulent watch. A little worried about the Jags. As a Jags truther, I'm a little panicked. A little worried. But we've been talking about this. Texans have a defensive-minded head coach in Ryan, D'Amico Ryans. They have a solid defense. They've been drafting defensive pieces. And their head coach, again, defensive guru. That defense has been playing well. I know, Nick, the Raiders just got, got destroyed by the Steelers. Only one sack, 23 points allowed. Kenny Pickett looked good for once. I think that's the first time he's ever thrown for more than one touchdown in a game. Oh my God, congrats. Now again, I'm a Kenny Pickett guy. I thought Kenny Pickett was going to get better. But if you score 23 points against the fucking Raiders, it's not kumbaya, hallelujah. 
It's just, you should do that, right? The Raiders' defense is terrible. So congrats. Now again, if I was a Steelers fan, I would be so excited. Oh, Kenny looks good, this, that, and the other thing, right? But I try not to be, and I'm not a Steelers fan. I'm a Dolphins fan. You can see I'm wearing the Tua shirt the fucking Dolphins had. I was basically given Tua a gawk gawk 9000 at the beginning of the video, right? I get it, right? But I like Kenny Pickett. I hope the Steelers can succeed because the Steelers are, in my opinion, they have awesome players that are fun. But... This isn't the Raiders' defense, and this Texans' defense has looked good again. Am I clamoring that you need to run to the waiver wire and pick up the Houston Texans' defense? No, they're a last-ditch kind of defense, but there are worse options than them, and again, that defense looking pretty pretty interesting, and that's Steelers' offense. Again, oh my god, they look good against the Raiders. Don't overreact to beating the fucking Raiders, okay? Now, on to the honorable mentions that are likely not available in your league, but if you could pick them up, or if you have them on your team, I'm starting them this week easily. These are probably top five defenses all, in my opinion, on the week. Kansas City Chiefs at the New York Jumbo Jets. The Jets head coach Robert Salah, the guy that looks like Xerxes from 300. He refuses to bench Zach Wilson and find some other option, unless magically they end up with like Kirk Cousins on the team. The Chiefs defense is going to look fantastic against the Jets offense. The Steelers at the Texans again. Steelers defense, really good. Texans offense, pretty eh. I think the Steelers defense, especially against a bad Houston Texans offensive line, looks good. The Dallas Cowboys versus the Patriots. Again, I know the Dallas Cowboys just got torched by the Cardinals. I think this is a bounce back game for the Cowboys defense. Again, the Patriots offense doesn't really look good at all. And then the 49ers versus the Arizona Cardinals. I know the Cardinals are riding high. After I'm saying the Dallas Cowboys, after probably eliminating half of America out of their survivor pool, the 49ers defense, they're legit, right? They're not Fugazi. They're not a Wazi. They're not a Woozy. The 49ers defense will be all over Joshua Dobbs. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you didn't enjoy, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below as well. It helps me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. If you want to check out the Patreon for my weekly rankings, as well as an answer to all of your guys' questions that you may have, check out the Patreon link in the video description for $7.50 a month. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great guys' day. And as always, good boy.